How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family. It's one of these type of videos, my royal family. You really need to go get yo shit. This going to be real juicy. Oh, real juicy, my royal family. I got a little something, something to read to the royal family. Got some videos. You know how I get down here on the true royal family and true royal. Well, my royal family. Um, a few days ago, I had, like many, had played a video where we heard Joe Biden going in on the biscuit eaters. They was chastised. They did not squawk back at all. And um, he was very, very pissed. And so somebody leaked it out because they wanted to, you know, they was afraid to speak up, but they did put the vid, you know, the audio out to, to show this is how we get talked to, like a stepchild. Well, the other night on Field Advice Show, I seen this video that was juicy. But some of y'all have seen it. Some of y'all didn't. Y'all gonna see it today. And I was like, damn. I didn't know this was going on. So we have here the founders of Black Lives Matter. And they all up in their feelings. Now, how I'm going to start this out, my royal family, is um, I have something to read. And let me blow this up here. I'm on my laptop. I want y'all to pay close attention to dates. So the day of the election was November 3rd. And Black Lives Matter wrote a letter to Joe Biden. All right. And I'm going to read it to you. Congratulations on your election to the presidency and vice presidency of the United States. Like so many, we are relieved that Trump era in government is coming to a close. As we celebrate his electoral demise, we also know that his political exit does not ensure an end to the intolerable conditions faced by black people in America. A well thought out community um, driven fully um, resource agenda that address the particular challenges faced by black people must be a top priority. We are requesting a meeting with you both to discuss the expectations, expectations that we have for your administration and the commitments that must be made to black people. Without the resounding support, ooh, let me cut that down. I don't want no pop-ups over here on my um, laptop. I'm working off of two computers as usual. Uh, let me see, let's see where I'm at. Without the resounding support of black people, we would be saddled with a very different electoral outcome in short. Black people won this election alongside black led organizations around the nation. Black Lives Matter invested heavily in this election. Um, voted and organized, became our model. Our electoral justice efforts reached more than 60 million voters. We want um, something for our vote. We want to be heard and our agendas to be, to be prioritized. We issue these expectations, not just because black people are the most consistent and reliable voters for the Dem Democrats, but also because black people are truly living in crisis in a nation that was built on our subjugation. Up until this point, the United States has refused to directly reckon with the way that it has devalued black people and devastated our lives. This cannot continue. Black people can neither afford to live through um, 
um, through the Trump-like presidency, nor through the indifference of a democratic controlled government that refuses to wrestle with its most egregious and um, and damn and demeanable, excuse me, shame. President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris, both of you discuss addressing systemic racism as a as central to your um, election campaigns. Both of you have expressed regrets regarding your record on issues impacting black people. The best way to ensure that you remedy the past missteps and work towards a more just future for black people by the extent by the extension of all people is to take your direction from black grassroots organizations that have been um engaged in the work for decades with a legacy that span back to the first arrival of enslaved africans we look forward to meeting with you at your convenience um to begin the immediate work of, um, of black liberation we would like to actively engage in your transitional team planning policy work again congratulations on your win let's get to work all right so this letter again was sent out november 7th 2020 then i found some in my real family so um then there is a petition drive here on November 9th. Okay, that's two days later. Later. So, join Black Lives Matter in our request for a meeting with President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris. We would, we work hard, we work long and hard to ensure we did all we could to vote uh, Donald Trump out of the White House. We succeeded, and in doing so, we were um, elect a black woman, the first black woman to the vice presidency. But the truth is, is getting Trump out of office with not the end all be all. The work is just beginning. We start by holding the new president elect, vice president elect accountable to their campaign and commitments of addressing systemic racism by emphasizing our willingness to work with them. That's why Black Lives Matter sends a letter to President-elect Joe Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, requesting a meeting with both them to discuss the expectations that we have for this administration and the commitments that must be made to black people. The more people who ask for this meeting, the bigger the seat our movement has at the table. Please join us in our um, meeting request by signing this petition below. And I'm like, okay, two days later, you already all up in your feelings because you didn't felt something because um, you didn't get a response in two days. Well, um... As of now, my royal family, let me show y'all this. Let me see. Now, that was six days ago. So, now that's 38 days. 38 days. It has been, you know, even they didn't have it up there because I looked already. Since we requested a meeting with um, Biden and Harris, we heard no response. So, the founders are pissed with the president because these feminists thought that they truly had a seat at the table. One in particular thought, um, let me pull her up over here. That she was going to get up in um, Ice Cube's grill on Roland Martin. She felt some kind of way because of what he had put together. And he said, you got to work on both sides. And then I showed y'all the video 
where they tried to use a succession of sisters to attack Ice Cube. And they were saying he didn't put nothing in place for women. And he said, hey, this thing is open. This ain't a sealed deal, you know? And I didn't like the way they was coming at the brother. And um, he explained, this chick name is Alicia, that um, both sides lie. But see what they did was they put all their eggs in one basket. They figure all this hoopla that um, they didn't been doing for a, a while would um, assure them a seat at the table. See, you've been watching these Beckys way too long. And I've been saying like a broke ass record, she would be the first. Anybody that's new to the true royal family, a true royal, I repeat myself a lot. I get visions like a lot of people in the royal family. I'm empathic. So I have to repeat myself again. It's been three years now. The creator told me as clear as day three years ago in the summer that the white woman would be the first to get my wrath. That does not exclude the white man because he upheld her shit. And you got a lot of them that, um, that the enemy, he don't even trust his own woman. He don't even trust his own mama. And you take on these ways. They look, they look at groups like this like, you don't got nothing to offer. You don't even have an economical base. You being fronted by the enemy when it comes to the coins. So you all puffed up with pride and stuff. Now, I have had to defend Black Lives Matter because people have even lied on Black Lives Matter. But do I support Black Lives Matter overall? Absolutely not. And I'm not going to go in detail why, because we don't have enough time for that. But they are all up in their feelings. And they feel in some kind of way because they really thought they was going to have a seat at the table. And they are also in their feelings because that meeting where Biden is talking real greasy to the biscuit eaters, they was pissed off that they wasn't a part of that meeting. They thought they were supposed to be part of that. So let's get into some videos, my royal family. And then, oh yeah, I got that bonus video. I got that bonus video that I'm going to show y'all too. This juicy. So we're going to get in video number one. demanding a seat at the table after being ignored by teen Biden for more than 30 days. In a petition, the group writes, quote, black voters give and give to this country and deserve a voice in the decision making process of this, the progress of this future administration. Here to react is host of the podcast, Rob Smith is problematic. Rob Smith himself. Hey, hey, Rob. Hey, how you doing? Thanks doing for having well, me on, on a well. Problematic Tuesday. All right, you're welcome. What's your reaction to this? They're saying they're ignored by Biden's administration or the, by the Biden team right now, and, and they want their voices heard. Well, they are being ignored because they were used by the Biden team and the Biden campaign throughout this entire uh, election season. Look, uh, we've been having this conversation for months on end, and everybody knew, and a lot of black conservatives like me have been saying, that as soon as they got what they wanted, a a in this case, Joe Biden apparently looking to enter the White House in January, that the Black Lives Matter protests and all of this stuff, they would just forget about it, and that's what has happened. So they have been used, they're starting to realize that they have been used, and that is why they're going public with this. Now remember, on election night, Black Lives Matter tweeted, or the day after the election, they tweeted uh, their symbol with the fist and it literally said, we won. So they thought that Joe Biden getting into the White House means that they won, but what it really means is that, that they have been used over and over again, um, just like African American voters have been used in the past. Um, they made them afraid. They, you know, they pushed out uh, stories of, of racism and all of this stuff that weren't entirely true, and they used this in order to get black votes. And what they are getting now is not a seat at the table. What they're getting now is ignored because they have been used. So in another issue, um, Black Lives Matter DC activists, they're complaining. They're calling to defund the police 
but then they're complaining because the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington is not protecting them. Listen to this. Black Lives Matter DC denounces the failure of DC government, both the mayor and her police department under the leadership of the failed outgoing police chief, Peter Newsom, to protect the rights of DC residents. Black Lives Matter said, tell the truth, it means defund MPD. Because MPD don't keep us safe. Rob, your reaction? Uh, I, I don't know what it is, what it was that I just saw. It was just a lot of a lot of gobbledygook coming from that guy's mouth. Uh, but look, it, it, it really does boggle the mind, and it makes no sense. They wrote, they had a huge defund the police mural right by the Black Lives Matter mural in D.C. Uh, but what it really boils down to is, like a lot of stuff that we've been seeing this year, it's always rules for thee and not for me. So they want to defund the police because this sounds great when they're giving speeches and when they're trying to raise money or when they do whatever. But when they need the actual law enforcement, um, it's apparently not there enough. So it just makes no sense. Um, it, it just is confusing to me. I'm sure it's confusing to them. And what we're really seeing is a disconnect between the people that are out there doing the work on the ground, for these Black Lives Matter organizers, and the, the larger um, organizations that are, are really not paying too much attention to them and caring about them. You got Biden ignoring the, the national organization. You have Muriel Bowser and all these people ignoring the local organization. So at this point, like I said, now that they have been used for their votes, um, and they'll be used for their votes again in 2022 and 2024, by the way, they're not getting anything out of it. Well, you even have Biden, you have a lot of Democratic leaders that are saying it is the wrong message. Our constituents do not support defunding the police. But now these police departments don't have the money to pay the cops. And then those very people that didn't want them to have all of the money are now complaining because they're not getting protection. It's unbelievable. All right, thanks so exactly. much, Rob. Thanks. Now, we know that Fox News was going to take this and run with it. And what the brother said was absolutely true. You were used. We told you. Now, anybody that is new to the True Royal family or my True Royal channel, I don't vote at all, and I don't support none of the parties. All right? Because you got some people that assume if you speak either on either side, then you're for whatever side and all of that. It didn't matter to me who was in office. But what I'm happy about is that Biden showed his ass early on to um, the biscuit eaters. And he essentially let them know, basically, um, with nigga dripping off his lip, you ain't going to dictate to me anything. I decide what goes in my cabinet. I decide what I'm going to do. And as far as he's concerned, um, the black agenda has been fulfilled. You got you a black woman, but she ain't no black woman. All right. That's how they look at it. And you got the gall to come to me to ask me anything. See, you got some black folks out here really think that they are part of the system. Some of us are extremely slow extremely then on top of that these founders really think they didn't did something this makes me think back when my mama was in the panthers we didn't we we didn't marched and hoop and hollered all up and down the street that don't work that don't work something else has to be done and one of the things we don't have again and again and again, an economical black base. We don't own enough property. Do you know when you start acquiring property, um, and, I mean, e and I mean even commercial property, and you start buying blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks of, of, of property and stuff, and I'm not saying that's the whole picture of it, that eventually, you have more weight and political power. But they look at these type of groups, as especially unquote grassroots, all you hear is to make noise and beg. And their actions are speaking volumes. 38 days, I ain't heard nothing from you, okay? And then here, right here, 
they already got the petition out? You wrote the, you did the letter on the 7th of November and on the 9th of the November? You demanding a seat at the table? You just gonna jaw jack? See how they looking at you is like, well, what, what you gonna offer? You just think you just gonna offer lip service? A lot of us are not politically savvy how this shit really work, all right? We will never be a protective class. Now they will tell us that, but we not. And then they will tell us, well, these things we're doing for all Americans, but they don't look at you as an America, an American until it is time to vote in the same repetitive shit over and over and over again. All right, now let's get into the bonus video. I want you to lean all up in it because it is juicy. Everyone, my name is Demetra K of the Demetra K Show here on YouTube and a proud contributor of the African Diaspora News Channel. So if you can do me a favor and subscribe to both channels, I would greatly appreciate it. So let's get right into it. Um, almost a month ago, or maybe a little over a month ago at this point, uh, Black Lives Matter, they sent um, a letter to the Biden-Harris um, administration at this point. Um, they had won the uh, presidency of the United States. And so Black Lives Matter sent a letter saying, hey, you know, we want to meet with you to get um, a black agenda passed. We want our concerns to be addressed and we'd love an opportunity to do that. Now, remember that was November 7th. And so on December 9th, they put out a letter, they being Black Lives Matter, and it was that from Patrice uh, Colors. I think that's how you say her last name. She's one of the uh, founders of Black Lives Matter. She uh, sent out the letter and everything, and she basically, their organization rather, so I don't know exactly who it came from, but their organization on Twitter said the following. The civil rights movement of the 21st century involves Black Lives Matter. To leave us out is to ignore the millions of people who brought the Biden-Harris victory home, okay? Now, it says, at Joe Biden, at Kamala Harris, we are watching we are waiting and we are tired of waiting, okay? Now, that was on uh, December 9th, so a couple of days ago at this point. And I wanna also take you back to an interview that night, I'm gonna bring Ice Cube into the mix. Um, an interview that Ice Cube had with Roland Martin, it was on October 15th, and Roland brought in um, Alicia Garza, she's the other co-founder of Black Lives Matter, brought her into the conversation and you know to me it seemed like she was kind of mad with Ice Cube because he agreed to work with either party Trump or Biden whoever was going to win the presidency and he was going to take their his rather contract with black America to either administration saying hey this is what black people need and we want you to help us get it right and so during that interview on Roland Martin she was mad with Ice Cube that he would even entertain working with Trump because, you know, Trump's followers, the MAGA crowd and all of that have threatened her to the point to where she needs 24-7 security guards because they've threatened to kill her and her family and, you know, all the other co-founders and all of that. And so uh, Ice Cube made a point to say, well, regardless of who gets into the White House, black people still need to get things done, right? And so... As I read that tweet, basically saying we're watching, we're waiting, and we're tired of waiting, I thought, well, you were mad at Ice Cube for wanting to work with both parties, but the party that you got behind 100%, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you're so vehement about supporting them, and you know, as a lot of black people were, went out and voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in droves, you're so, you know, vehement about that, and yet they won't even give you the time of day. They won't even talk to you. But you were mad at Ice Cube for saying, hey, you know, we need to put this party line stuff to the side. We need to uh, approach both people. And now the people that you went harder to paint for won't even return your call. They, like, forgot that you exist. 
And yeah, I agree, Black Lives Matter is a pretty big organization that has brought a lot of attention to the plight of black people. Now, I would take exception, and I would also argue that, or ask the question rather, what has Black Lives Matter actually gotten accomplished for black people? Um, you know, they're crying to sit at the table with Massa, but remember this here, during the uh, George Floyd protests, Black Lives Matter raised about $1.6 billion. You mean to tell me Black Lives Matter can't build their own table? They can't, you know, get things done with all of that money, not including all of the money that they've raised. Now, we know the story, the truth, and all of that, that, you know, that organization. And Cube actually made a good point in saying, well, we want to work with organizations that, for lack of better words, um, have not been compromised. An organization that don't, they're not tied to other organizations because we know, especially with black organizations, when white organizations or other organizations get involved, it's never going to be a fully black organization. It's going to do the will of everybody else. And you guys can see it. And this is another point I thought about too. So Black Lives Matter, we know that the majority of their founders um, are LGBTQ. It's a fact, they are. They're married to, you know, this person, that person, women, and all of that. And I'm not saying anything against that community and all of that. But what I am saying is, well, Joe Biden did say he was going to do something for your community. He said in the first 100 days he was going to do stuff for the LGBTQ community. And so maybe you're not seeing it that way because that's who, you know, Black Lives Matter, they represent quite a bit. They get a lot of things done for um, that community. And so maybe uh, Joe Biden is going to do something for you after all. But, you know, to, like, I'm also like, where is the shame? Where is the shame in having to admit that you've been taken for a ride? The very people that you've been, you know, going hard to pay for won't even return your call. Like, I don't think I would have disclosed that. I would have kept that a secret. You know, I would have been like, wow, we, we're not going to talk about that much. But I also think, too, with them saying that they are, you know, a big part of the civil rights movement and all of that, I think they're thinking more of themselves than they ought to. Because while I take, um, I have some issues with the civil rights movement, civil rights movement, rather, the civil rights movement did get some things done. But I ask, what did Black, or what has Black Lives Matter gotten done? Now, I'm not saying they haven't. I, I just don't know, right? It's not very apparent to me. And like I said, when I think of uh, $1.6 billion, I think of some, maybe, you know, if you really say Black Lives Matter, why not funnel some of that money to the communities, right into the hands of the very people who need it? What have you done with all of that money? Like, I'm curious. Are you guys curious? I want to know what have you done with all that money. And so I just think it's very laughable, very laughable that you would tweet, you know, you being a Black Lives Matter organization would tweet that the Biden-Harris uh, administration, the incoming administration rather, won't even talk to you. And you talking about you tired of waiting. But what I want to know is really, who did you think you were to them? Did you think you were some type of a, what, a kingmaker? You know, you, 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 you call the shots, did you think you were a, a shot caller? The, the one thing white supremacy will always do to black people who think they in like Flynn, they will always humble you. They will always let you know where you stand. And that's on the other side of the door because you ain't getting in here. That's what they're saying. And don't get confused by Kamala Harris. You know who Kamala Harris really is. And to think that her is a black woman, and I again, I don't want to have that argument whether she's black, she's Indian, she is who she says she is, but to me, if she's a black woman, it's even worse that, you know, she won't open the door to black organizations and say, hey, Joe, let's at least hear what they got to say, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's what she said when she, you know, said uh, she like Fife dog, you know what I'm saying, Fife? <laughs> But, you know, uh, don't be fooled by her either. She is, a, as I call, a toe, tool of white supremacy. Uh, <laughs> a tool of white supremacy. And so, you know, but anyway, shame on Black Lives Matter. Or I should say, where is the shame in um, hiding the fact that you've been um, ignored? I was going to say something else, but I'm, I'm going to keep it classy. That you've been ignored 
by the very people you gave your all to, you know, but anyway, you guys, I hope that all makes sense to you. And for more insightful information, please subscribe to this right. channel and my channel, The Demetri. Now, ain't that deep, my royal family? And I totally agree. You would think Campbell would say something, right? Mm-mm. She going to lay in the cut real quiet like. Now, you heard how much money they raised. Billions. One billion. That's a lot of money. Do you know what you can create with that and generate with that? To hell having a seat with the table. Start tangible businesses where there is a demand. You know, I had that kind of money. I had my own toilet paper for my folks, but I wouldn't discriminate. You know, folks got to wipe their behind. You know, that's what I'm thinking, because, you know, the way the world is going right now, can't have these little cutesy businesses. It's got to be a demand. You know, people got to wipe their ass. People have to take a bath. People have to eat. People have to drink water. You know, that right there, you could have started your own bank. You know, or your credit union or whatever like that. But no, you're having illusions of grandeur and you think you're going to be up there possibly up on that throne. No, it ain't going to work like that. This needed to happen, my royal family. And it's happening on the world stage. There are a lot of dynamics that are happening on the world stage. We got Rona. She about that life globally. We got Trump on his shenanigans. Our father, long, long, long ago, said ye be separate. So he didn't put something in place to keep us separate. But you got some of our folks are hard-headed. You know, you can, when I talk about being affected by the system, there is different levels of being affected by the system. And some of us start thinking like the enemy, acting like the enemy, and making demands like the enemy. Like you really got it going on. So that's what I, you know, that makes me think a little bit deeper about you were able to collect a billion dollars. You know. And you can start something with that and get people employed. And then you can go from state to state to state. You know, employ your people. You know. Because the way that political system is set up, it was not designed for the royal family, let alone some feminists, let alone some black feminists, you know? And these people can act like they care so immensely about the gay community. They don't care about the gay community. But see, the gay community will bully you. And there's a, a, a large sector of the gay community, they have a economical base. You know, they will invest in their sales. And see, we get very little money. So when we do acquire money, we can't see investing in ourselves like that. All we can see is I got to get my house, my car, you know, some bling stuff and all of that. Because we so sore, we don't have money like that. I understand that, you know, some parts, yes, I'm being very critical and some parts that I'm speaking, I, I'm totally understanding, but the level of sheer disrespect that that woman showed to Ice Cube and came with an attitude, even Roland Martin had an attitude because, um, you know, how people look at rappers like they don't have sense. Do you know Ice Cube been writing movie scripts for years? but they'll label these rappers in a such a way. You got the whole gamut um, in life, even with the rappers. You got your low down and up, up the gamut and all of that. And what he put together 
um, I thought was beautiful and it's open. He wants folks to add stuff to it. But um, um, when, and I know some of y'all seen that interview, you know, she was acting like she wanted to work with them, work with them, work, work with Ice Cube. I ain't seen nothing happen. And then Roland Martin was trying to cover up um, when Ice Cube said that he had met, he, he, he had approached the Democratic Party. And they said, wait. Basically, they didn't want to be bothering. But no, he tried to cover that up. You know? He tried to cover it up. So they was, they even before they got elected, they was already pushing back. So, like my father taught me, some people have to feel before they really get it, or this comes from my mouth. Some people have to have a full experience. And in that experience, they will feel some kind of way. And this is a big embarrassment. But what I look at this further is already on the 9th of November, you're already putting out a petition? Because you knew all along, but you was in a state. And you should be savvy enough to know not to put all your eggs in one damn basket. Cube said both parties lie. You can't trust none of them. They one and the same. They just playing that game. So this is going to be real interesting. How they going to really display to some of these folks who didn't vote it. Let me get back over here. Where he at? Voted. Look at him. Voted. His ass in office. And he letting you know, I won't be bothered with your ass. You have the gall to even bother me. You don't tell me shit. Do you understand? I'm massa. I'm running this motherfucker. That's what he really saying, my royal family. I know I have to keep it raw like that, my royal family. That's how I get down here on the true royal family, a true royal. So I really, really, really want to know how the royal family going to get down. So what I need you to do is to render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love and I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.